Welcome to Optimizely's new and improved AI product, OPPO. Optimizely OPPO enables marketing and digital teams to effortlessly scale the way they work and redefine what's possible, from ideation to optimization to analysis, and every step of the marketing lifecycle in between. OPPO is your agentic, fully autonomous, and infinitely scalable AI specialist, helping you complete any marketing and digital jobs to be done. Are you ready to unlock the full potential of Optimizely but unsure where to begin? You're not alone. Many users feel overwhelmed when first diving into a new platform. That's why we created OPPO to guide you every step of the way. Let's walk through the essential steps to get you started. Logging into OPPO is simple. Just head over to our brand new OPPO interface at oppo.optimizely.com and like accessing any other Optimizely product, use your regular Opti ID and you're in. For those who are in multiple organizations, once you're in, you might not see OPPO if that has not been enabled. Just switch to the organization with OPPO that you're intending to use. Okay, here we are. Now, you'll see OPPO as an option in your dashboard. Let's click on that and get right into it. The first thing you'll see is the OPPO chat. Here, you'll find all your past conversations. And the cool thing is, this history is persistent across all Optimizely products, which means the chat history stays with you no matter which product you're using Opal with, as long as it's enabled for that product. Now, if you're an admin, you'll notice a couple of extra icons on the left navigation. Let's start with connections down here. This is where you can easily manage where Opal is enabled, choosing the specific product and instance you want it to activate in. Here, we can easily see all the Optimizely products that are associated with the organization. And within each, you see the list of instances along with a checkbox beside them to say whether we want OPPO to be available or not. Next, let's configure our instruction agents. OPPO comes with pre-built instruction agent templates. They are deactivated by default, but you can activate them at any time and make changes to their details. Let's take a look at the parts that make up our agents and what you can do with them. An instruction agent consists of five parts, name, details, where to use, when to use, and active status. Name is used for you to easily tell which agent is which. And if the name is self-explanatory, you also know what it does. Details is where you give instructions and additional conditions on what this agent does, how it behaves, and defining a handle for your agents so users can use a shortcut to call the agent. Where and when to use allows you to control which product and instance has access to this agent, as well as when the agent knows it is called upon to do work. This is another place for you to define a handle for your agent. Lastly, the active status. After everything has been set up, if you don't activate the agent, it won't work. Now, let's dive deeper into the core component of an agent, the details. You might be thinking, how do I start? What should I write? Do I need to know coding? Don't worry, building an agent in OPPO is a lot easier than you might think. Just imagine you are giving instructions to an intern. You give context, explanations, and actions to do. Simple as that. What you're seeing here in our pre-built agents are instructions that are more advanced. It's like you're giving instructions to someone more senior on your team. You're able to use acronyms without having to explain to them. And that's all it really is right here as we use something called Markdown, which allows us to quickly format text using symbols. We can do something very similar without it. For example, for our pre-built agent keyword research, we can create an agent that does something very similar without Markdown. And as you can see, we don't need to use Markdown and the instructions can just be plain English. Now that we've taken a look at how we can write our details, we need to take a look at what to write next. The too long don't read version is, the more detailed and structured the instruction is, the better. We are talking about interns here, they're new. They don't know what to do. So the more structured and detailed your instruction is, the better. Most of the time, the instruction agents you're building here are meant to do very specific tasks. So when there's ambiguity or fake instructions, there'll be more room for the agents to deviate from their intended purpose. Depending on the purpose of your agent, the structure of your details will be different. Let's take a look at some of the pre-built agents and get a better understanding of the type of information you should aim to provide. Here's what the marketing researcher agent looks like. It starts with an objective, followed by step-by-step -step instructions of how to perform searches. 
and when the research is completed, a step-by-step -step instruction is given on how and what structure to put everything together in a report. And finally, instructions on creating a campaign. Let's take a look at another pre-built agent, video transcription. Here, we have steps that include displaying informative text, asking for additional input from users, putting the result, and with an additional option to offer translation. And finally, we'll take a look at tone of voice. This agent helps bring your company's tone of voice to life in your content. It starts with a quick overview, followed by a description of the personality and voice attributes, and then some definition and guideline around sentence style and structure, vocabulary, formats, and do's and don'ts. You can see from the three examples that although the content is very different, they all follow a similar structure of what information to provide. The general best practice here when building an instruction agent is that you should always provide an objective or goal, which is a clear statement of what the agent is intended to achieve, and this provides a guiding principle for the agent's actions. Mode activation, specifying the trigger phrase or a condition that activates the agent. This is where you clearly define what mode the agent enters and what that entails. Execution steps or process, the specific steps the agent should follow. This should be detailed step-by-step -step guide that covers all aspects of the agent's operation. Try to use clear and concise language, specifying which tools to use at which step, include prompts or questions the agent should ask the user, and define the expected output or deliverable at each step. And optionally, you can include a response format guideline which specify how the agent should format its responses, such as a table or list. And this ensures consistency and readability. And constraints or safety measures. This helps outline any limitation or safety measure the agent should observe, such as privacy concerns or data quality issues. The key principles of creating a great agent are clarity, using clear and concise language that is easy to understand, specificity, provide specific instructions and examples to guide the agent's behavior. Structure, organize the instructions in a logical and consistent manner. Actionability, ensure the instructions are actionable and provide clear guidance on what the agent should do. And context, provide sufficient context to help the agent understand its role and purpose. By following the structure, you can create agent's instructions that are clear, effective, and easy to maintain. On to the management side. Starting with how to manage your users. In the Opti ID Admin Center, you'll be able to manage the users in your organization for all Optimizely products, and that includes OPPO too. Simply go to Product Access, select OPPO as a product, and then select the instance of OPPO you want to manage. From there, you'll be able to invite users to use OPPO, change an existing user's permission between OPPO user and OPPO administrator, or remove users. One last thing that is very important is how to check your usage. From the same admin center, go to usage and billing. In here, you'll be able to find usage and billing information for all your Optimacy products within your organization. Let's take a look and see what information is available for Opal. A quick overview at the top, we can see the number of credits purchased, remaining, and used, followed by a daily usage breakdown, and a quick look at the purchase and contract history for credits. For a more detailed breakdown of usage, scrolling further down will give you the listing of usage by users and the option to select date range for this data, followed by a listing of usage by Optimacy product. And that's it. With these steps, you're well on your way to leveraging OPPO to streamline your Optimacy workflows, optimize your content, and drive better results. OPPO simplifies complex tasks, provides personalized recommendation, and helps you make the most of Optimize's powerful features. Ready to experience the difference? Log into OPPO today and start exploring. For more information, visit our website or contact our support team. Thanks for watching.